everybody. This is Terry Nance. I want to welcome you to 8 Minutes Strong with the Armor Bearer. I trust you're having a blessed day. You know, if these videos are blessing you and ministering to you, be sure and hit the subscribe button and uh, then send the link. Send it to everyone you know, especially those who are serving in the local church, friends of yours, so that they can, this, these uh, videos can encourage them and minister to them. And then, of course, go to godsarmorbearer.com where you can get the material. Uh, I've been talking about uh, the coaching and the mentoring. We're getting ready probably by next week. It should be up and running. It's been a little while getting it all uh, formatted and, and working. But I really look forward to doing some roundtable, uh, honestly, just discussion with armor bears all across the country where we're really just coaching and ministering. It's my heart to impart into you that, that heart and that spirit and really just release the anointing of an armor bearer on your life. And then, of course, then I'm going to be mentoring. I've been able to mentor several people over the years, and it's just my my blessing and my anointing that got, that's on my life to do that. And I really, really enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to it. So you can be a part of this. Uh, you just go to godsarmorbearer.com. It'll have all the info for you. I want to talk today. Uh, about prayer as an armor bearer. You know, we are to strengthen our leaders. That's, that's one of the key things as an armor bearer. And I remember when I served on the church staff, and of course I served at one particular church for 23 years. And I remember as an associate pastor there and on staff, I always made sure uh, church started at 10 o'clock. I was always there by eight, seven, most of the time, seven thirty. And I'd go in my office, shut the door. And for one hour, I just gave my time in prayer for the service. Now I had no, nothing really to do in the service, except just walk up and lead the people in prayer and turn it over to the pastor. So I wasn't speaking. But I knew as an armor bearer, it was important for me to prepare the way for the service and to stand with Pastor Caldwell. And I would, I would pray for an hour and then I'd go and get involved in the ministry of health, making sure everything was set up, make sure everything was, was done. But you know, there's one thing about prayer. Prayer prepares the way. It releases God into your world. And as an armor bearer, I'm going to tell you, you have to stay prayed up because if you, if you're not prayed up, the enemy is going to attack your mind. He's going to get you caught up into the work of the ministry. He's going to get you all wrapped up into people's emotions. He's, he's just, he's going to get you, uh, you know, and if he can, he'll have you offended at your pastor because yeah, he did something you didn't like. I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen in our lives, but the Bible is very, very clear about our prayer time. And so it, it is really time just to get back in your closet, stay in your closet. Of course, we're to pray all day long. And, you know, Ephesians 4, I was reading it yesterday, and, it, and especially in the Passion Translation, it's so beautiful because it just says, I mean, in everything, everything you do, every aspect of your life, pray. Get God involved. Talk to him about it. I mean, start talking to him the minute you get up and talk to him uh, when you go to sleep. And if you'll do that, you're, you're, again, you're releasing God in your world. You realize you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so God dwells in you. And so as you talk to him, he is the one that manifests and uses you and moves you through this world that you can be the witness that you need to be. But more than anything, again, being a strength to your pastor. When I stay prayed up, I know that whatever comes, then I'm going to be able to deal with it. But if I'm not really depending on the Lord and I'm looking, I'm trying to look for promotion or I'm striving with people, it, you're going to, it's going to destroy your faith. But I want you to listen to what Jesus said. And I, this is out of the mess, uh, the message translation, but I really like this. And Jesus is teaching on prayer in Matthew chapter six. And when he came before God, uh, he, he says, and when you come before God, verse number five, he said, don't turn it into a theatrical production. I like that. Don't, in other words, don't get up there and go, oh, oh, thou us God, thou greatest and the most highest, you know, forget all that. Just, just say father. You're, you're there to say father. I think it was so cool when Jesus introduces and just says, 
Go to your father. This is your father you're talking about. And when you realize it in, in Matthew chapter six, he just blew the law clean out the door about going to the priests and offering all the sacrifices. And this had not ended yet, but Jesus came to introduce the father. And as he introduced the father, it is about relationship. And you have a God who loves you and is there uh, to minister to you. And as you give yourself into what he is saying and what he is doing, just, you just got to get real with, with God. Now watch this. And all the people, he said, all the people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. He said, do you think God sits in a, in a box seat? You think God is impressed with your production of prayer and the way, the way you're doing it? And you've got all your little formulas all set up. Look, I have heard over the years of so many formulas. Well, you have to pray this way. Well, you got to go. You have to first of all, you got to come in with thanksgiving. And the next thing you have to do, you got to come in with praise. And then you have to go into the inner court. Can I tell you what? As a child of God, the very minute I go into my secret place, I'm right at the throne. I don't have to go through production. I don't have to go through all this stuff to get there. I'm there. I am because Jesus said you're there. So if Jesus said you're there, then you know what? You're there. So what do we do while we're there? We talk to him. Let's get honest before him. Uh, you can complain in his presence. You can. You can say, this is what way I feel. Now, you can let it all out. And the Lord wants you to get it out. Get it all out. Get everything off your chest. And then let the Spirit of God get, get you back to the Word and what he says about it. Now, he goes on and says, uh, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet place. Now, isn't it interesting, before Jesus told us how to pray, he told us where to pray. I always find that fascinating. Go get in your closet. Go shut the door. Pray to your father who seeth in secret. Your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. I want to encourage you right now. And I want to, and I pray this has just stimulated your faith and just, just something. Hey, I got to go get, get with God. There were so many times I walked in the house and Kim would say to me, Terry, what's going on, especially when I was an associate? And I'd say, let me go pray. I'll see you in an hour. And once I pray, I'll get this out. And once I got in my room and I shut the door and got on the floor and I just really released it to the Lord and talked to him for a while, then man, the strength came. Everything's going to be all right. I'm dealing with this. You stand up and you rejoice in faith. Well, I love you, and I just speak the blessing of heaven on your life today. You're an armor bearer, and we have to stay prayed up in the mantle of prayer. God bless you, and you have a wonderful day today.